What's up interview hackers? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I want to talk about why it is so important as a software engineer that you have other hobbies, that you have other things that you do on a regular basis outside of your job and outside of programming. Because I think a lot of times we see people and we hear about these people where they basically live and breathe code, right? They go to work every day and then they go home and they work on these side projects and they build these cool things. And maybe they have some app that they built that has a million users and you're like, oh my God, that's so impressive. Why am I not like that? And I want to encourage you to start thinking about what are some other hobbies that you can build into your life? What are some other things that you can do that are actually not code? Because that's not necessarily something that's necessary and it's not necessarily something that's even good. Because there's so many values, there's so many benefits to doing other sorts of things other than programming, to having these other hobbies. And I want to suggest a couple reasons why this is so important and also share with you some ways to think about what might be good hobbies for you, what might be good things for you to pick up and start doing. And so here's what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, I want to talk about what, why doing, why picking up some new hobbies can be so valuable. And the first thing is that it's really healthy. Our brains are not great at doing the same thing all day, every day, over and over again. It's just not something that we're really built for, and it's not something that's necessarily a good thing for us to do. And so by doing other hobbies, it allows you to exercise that left side versus that right side of your brain. It allows you to do different sorts of things, and it allows you to get out and try different things, which is really, really valuable. Just that variety, getting that engagement, helping your brain to stay focused when you are actually going into work. Like imagine that you're coding 12 hours a day. Are you gonna be as focused after the eighth or 10th hour of coding as you would be if you were only coding six hours a day? No, of course not, right? Because you're going to be doing so much of it that your brain is just gonna be absolutely shot and you're gonna to start to get burnt out. And we wanna avoid burnout because burnout is something that once you get burnt out, it is so hard to come back from that. So just by having other hobbies, by allowing yourself to do things that are not coding on a regular basis, it's incredibly valuable. It also forces us to push out beyond our comfort zone, right? Because when we pick new hobbies, especially when we pick up something that we've maybe never done before, it can be intimidating. I've definitely done things where I've gone, like I went rock climbing, we went, uh, I took a surfing lesson with my wife, and it was very intimidating because these weren't things that I'd ever done before. But I actually discovered that, wow, these are things that I really enjoy. These are things that I really wanna do again, and it's not necessarily something that I thought I was gonna enjoy, but I was like, I'm just gonna push out there, I'm gonna pick something random that I don't know about, and that I've never done before, and see what happens. And so it really opened me up to something brand new, and I discovered that I enjoyed something that. I never knew before. And finally, hobbies are a great way to meet people and a great way to meet people with similar interests. Because I know for me, like one of my favorite things to do is if you go out and you go to a place where you were doing something specific, right? Like think about if you've ever been skiing or if you've ever been hiking, you go at the end of the day and you're sitting in the lodge or you're sitting in, you know, the little uh, lean to at the campsite. And what you find is that the only people who are there are people who share this very specific interest with you, right? Because that's the only way that they got there in the first place. The only people staying at a ski lodge are people who wanna go skiing. The only people staying at some lean-to in the middle of the mountains are people that love hiking. And so you get this chance to really easily connect with people because you're setting yourself up for a situation where they're already, uh, there is already some common ground. There's already some reason to connect with people. As opposed to like if you go out to a bar and try and meet new people, that can be really hard and I'm terrible at that. So it's like, I love putting myself in these situations and it doesn't matter what it is. Because it could be you took an improv class. It could be joining a choir. It could be anything. You're just putting yourself in a situation where you're with other people who like, who like something that's similar to you. And you have no idea what these connections can lead to. You have no idea what can come of this. And this could be, you know, I've done things where I've met someone who's a software engineer, or I've met someone who is a friend of a friend and I didn't even know it. And it's just like, you're opening yourself up to that serendipity, which is so, so valuable. And now I wanna talk about four different categories of things that you can make, uh, that you can think about when you are choosing a new hobby because a lot of times it can be kind of intimidating to say like, well, I don't know what I enjoy doing. I don't know what I want to do. And so I want to make it really easy for you to say, okay, let me just pick one thing and I'm going to go for it. So there are basically four broad categories that I came up with. You can do something physical, something musical, something mental, or something spiritual. And so let's talk through these for a second. 
I personally love doing things that are physical. Because I think that especially, you want to think about, can I do something that's a little bit in contrast to what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis? And so something physical is perfect because you're not doing physical stuff when you're sitting in front of the computer all day. So I personally love going hiking. I love going to the gym. I love you know going rock climbing or trying something new, trying a new sport. These are all examples of something physical that you can do that are a really great way to get out of your comfort zone and try something different. And they have the added benefit that they're so healthy for you, right? It's so healthy for you to get your body moving, to get yourself out there, that I would highly encourage you to think about if there's something in this category that is something you, that you would be excited about, absolutely that's a really good choice. The next is something musical or really something like performance-based, which could be something musical like learning how to sing, taking piano lessons, joining a choir, It could, but it could also be something like you know, taking an improv class or learning to do stand-up. I somehow managed to find myself surrounded by friends who love to do stand-up. And so that's something that I've been considering trying myself, which I think is probably gonna be really hard, but something that would be really fun and something that I would love to know how to do. Next, we have something mental. And this is the thing where, you know, you might choose to do this, but I would probably discourage you. Because if you think about it, Working as a software engineer, coding every day is very mental already. You're really in your head and you're thinking a lot about these different things. And so you're just kind of doing more of the same, but you're switching it up. But if you don't, if none of the other things appeal to you, this is still better than continuing to do software engineering. You could like learn to play chess. You could play board games. You could read. You could, you know, learn a new language. There are so many different examples of mental things where it's just learning something new and, you know, discovering a new world within that. And then finally, you can do something spiritual, right? You can try meditation, you can go to church, you can pray. There are things that, you know, depending on what your background is and depending on what's important to you, this might be a great thing to do. You could find time to travel and like spend some time in solitude. I was gonna say isolation, but really more like solitude, right? You're taking some time to yourself. And these are just a broad example. There are tons of other things that you can do too, but there's so much value in putting yourself out there and trying something new and experimenting with new hobbies. And I would highly encourage you to try that. That's really all I got for you today because I just wanted to throw this out there. This is something I've been thinking a lot about because I know that I can tend to get so focused on what I'm doing that I never take the time to experiment with other things. I never take the time to have those experiences. And I really want to encourage you to think about how you can start to do that and realize that doing that, it might sound like a waste of time. It might sound like you're taking time away from what is most important to you, but that's not true. By finding these things that are for you, by finding these things that are different, it's going to give you that room to grow and continue to improve as a person and become the kind of person that companies are going to really want to hire. Become a person where you can go into your interview and talk with your interviewer and find this like uncommon commonality. There's so much value in that and I'd highly encourage you to think about this. And if you haven't already, make sure that you go over to bitebybyte.com and download our free 50 coding interview questions guide where I talk through the 50 most common coding interview questions that you're going to see in your coding interview. This is going to be super valuable if you're looking for that new job, if you're wanting to get in there and just totally crush it. So highly encourage you to check it out and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.